All right, let's get to the office buildings because you guys are in one of our offices. <laughs> By the way, is that cool? Cool view? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, in just a few minutes as we talk about this, we'll be pointing at some of these properties to really, uh, to really give you a real good sense of what's going on right now. Now, with the office buildings, I'm sure you guys have seen these words before. You guys are high rise, mid rise, to low rise, and you have your garden buildings. Anybody know what a garden building is? How many stories did you say? I'm saying about two. Two stories. That's correct. Two stories. And but why would they be called garden? A garden. Like what could have been like a <laughs> small building or whatever, you know? Why do they call it a garden building? Anybody know? You know why they call garden level apartments? They're sort of half buried in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, most of them have a garden as well. It's going to become a signature name for those buildings. Oh, that does make sense. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty, it was pretty deep, wasn't it? It, it took a college degree for me to figure that out. <laughs> um, all right, before we go to the classes of the buildings, I just want to make a couple points here that most people don't really realize. If you look here in downtown, we have quite a few different elevation levels, right? If you go to a smaller town, what's well, a high rise? <laughs> right? A high rise can be like eight stories. <laughs> it doesn't need to be 30 stories like that one over there, right? It doesn't need to be. That's 24, I think. Um, so it's relative to your marketplace. You might have a mid-rise that's five stories, which here, that is definitely low-rise. So you will, you will know based on your marketplace as you do your research. Class A, Class B, Class D. You guys have all heard of this, right? All right. Well, let's get started with that. Class A. In fact, by the way, the picture of this building is actually that property right there that you see right behind, behind you. It's a Class A building. Okay, basically, here's what it is. Class A buildings must be a brand new or, at the very least, in the current building cycle. It has all of the bells and whistles and the best uh, buildings that the best buildings include. So you have all of the amenities is what it basically says here, that you would have all the new technological elements of it, a lot more spacious, a lot more luxurious, and therefore it's also going to have the highest rent here. So that's the beauty of a Class A building. So that's basically what it means. It's going to cost you more because it has all the cool bells and whistles, and it was built within the most recent building cycle. That's what that represents. These office buildings typically are very luxurious, and they're most of the time the higher rises in most of the communities, because by now they recognize the value of going up and going higher. And so that's why that particular building is one of the higher buildings in downtown, and it generates a lot more income because of that. Okay? Class B. If I can ever click the button. All right. You are standing in a Class B. Now, it's, it, it was technically going to be a Class C, but it was renovated. And here's the difference. They're usually over eight years old, or, or no, no older than eight years old. And depending on your neighborhood is really what it comes down to. If the current building cycle that you're in is within three to four years, then it might push you back a little further. Okay, does that make sense? For your, for your actual Class B property type. So typically, they're a little bit more obsolete com in comparison to the Class A. You might have still some of the, you know, obviously the amenities that you would have, but this particular property in comparison to the Class A doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that typically would come with a newer building that has all the luxurious elements to it. Okay? What, what's considered a building cycle? Is it a certain number of years or a certain number of... That's a really good question. It, what you'll notice is it's all totally different relative to where you are. You can see the real estate cycle, which we're going to cover, and many times you'll right. notice that when the building cycle starts, you'll start seeing the new construction. Right. Uh, you'll hear some of the old guys say, when you see the cranes moving... Well, uh, like in Jacksonville, there's tons of mm -hmm. construction. Mm -hmm. And so those buildings that come up now will be considered Class A. The Class A's that have been now for six to eight years are now considered Class B because they're obsolete in comparison to the newer amenities and technologies that are offered in Class A. So it is, it's all relative to your marketplace, mm -hmm. uh, and it's all connected to the real estate cycle, which we're going to talk about in just a few, okay? Mm -hmm.